Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve generate Fibonacci sequence day 29 of the JavaScript challenge. We're getting to the finish line and today we get a chance to learn about generators and we're going to use them to solve the Fibonacci sequence problem, which if you don't remember, we basically start with a number zero, the next number is one, and then every number after that is going to be the addition of the two previous numbers. So this is going to be one, this is going to be two, one plus one, this is going to be three because it's two plus one and etc cetera, etc cetera. you can keep going it's not a super difficult problem to solve but to solve them in the way they want us to today we actually have to understand what a generator is so first let's look at the example and then i'm going to code up the solution and then i'm going to do a small but thorough deep dive into what exactly is going on and why you would want to write code like this so first things first you can see they call our fibonacci generator which is going to return a generator well they call the fibonacci generator function function which returns a generator and then on that generator you can see we call next which is going to give us the first Fibonacci number then we call next again and it's going to give us the second number and we could keep calling next and it's going to go infinitely at least the way we're going to code this up so the next one would be one then we'd get two then we would get three then we would get five etc etc so it's hard to explain this to you before I actually show you the code so that's what I'm going to start with we know the Fibonacci sequence starts with two numbers the first First one I'm going to call n1 is going to be 0 and n2 is going to be 1 and then after that we're going to update the two Fibonacci numbers by let's say possibly storing the second number in a temporary variable and then we're going to say the new n2 is going to be the previous two numbers added together n1 plus n2 and then the new n1 is going to be what the old n2 used to be and that's why we saved it in a temporary variable. So this is kind of how we compute the Fibonacci sequence and probably want to put it in a loop, which in this case, we want to go forever. So you might be wondering, how do we break out of that loop? And that's what I'm going to show you. And believe it or not, we're not even going to have a return statement here. And the reason is because this is a generator function. And we know that because if you didn't notice, there's a little star in the definition of the function. And of course, if this was a named function, it would look something like this, where we put the function name here and the star goes after this part. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work for arrow functions, though, like the way we're kind of uh, defining this anonymous function is by getting rid of the name here and then putting the name over here. But with arrow functions, I don't think you can do something like this, like put the star before it or after it. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, the way we return values from a generator function is actually with the keyword yield. So in this case, we want to yield every single number in the Fibonacci sequence, starting with the first one. So right before this loop even starts to execute let's yield the first number and simply calling the Fibonacci generator is not going to yield this number only calling next on that generator is going to do that so now you can kind of understand what's going on here when this executes for the first time we're going to call next and that's going to execute this function until yield gets called and this is basically going to return zero and then pause the execution of this generator function then next time we call next it's going to basically complete one iteration of the loop update n2 update n1 and then it's going to yield again and the second time it yields a one and then next time it yields a one next time it yields a two etc etc so that's pretty much what's going on here it's not as complicated as you might think and we can actually condense this code a tiny bit and i'm going to go ahead and do that we can do parallel assignments with something called deconstructing in javascript so n1 and n2 are going to be equal to n1 is going to be assigned to n2 and n2 is going to be assigned to n1 plus n2 so wrapping these in brackets basically allows them to be executed in parallel or rather it executes the right hand side before actually assigning them to the variables that's just a small trick it's not really related to generators at all but quickly let me run this code to show you that it works and as you can see it does and it's pretty efficient now to wrap things up i want to mention that actually other languages support this as well. Python is one, but a lot of languages do not. Like C++, I don't think has like native support for generators, and I don't think Java does either. There might be workarounds for those languages. But first of all, why would you even want to implement something like this in the first place? Well, one, for an infinite sequence, which the Fibonacci sequence happens to be one, this works, and we don't have to actually execute this loop forever. 
we can just call next on it as many times as we want to. So in that case, it kind of reminds you of the iterator design pattern. At least it kind of reminds me of that. And there definitely is some overlap with this. You can imagine how a generator could be used to iterate through something like a linked list or maybe even a binary tree. The difference is though, usually iterators are only used on like finite data structures, not on not necessarily on like an infinite sequence. And it also kind of saves our state for us. So you can imagine that maybe using a generator would be more simple for something like a binary search tree where we kind of still save our pointers. You could also do that with an iterator, but I think the code would be slightly more complex. But to be completely honest, I've never really had to use generators in any production code. And maybe if you have, you can comment below because I'd be interested to hear. But that's all I really wanted to talk about. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.